This conference will now be recorded. I hope those attending online, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes you can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. okay, thank you. So, and uh, you see the screen share? Yes, sir. Screen also. Thank you for that. So, today we'll be starting with the VLSI front end training demo session. Uh, before that, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Srinivas. I am the founder of the institute and I manage the front end training domain. That is all the aspects, RTL design, integration, functional verification, all the aspects I manage. So as we go forward, you will understand the front end domain, what we mean by functional verification and what we mean by back end domain. Uh, so this will be the agenda for today's session. We will be talking about demo session overview. What is the agenda of demo session? And what we are going to do. Then a brief overview of institute and the trailer profile and the what courses we offer. And what is front end domain? What is back end domain? And which course is right for you? Basically, today's demo session is. It's better everyone is muted. Yeah, I have muted everyone. Okay. So today's demo session is focused on multiple aspects. Uh, it is for a demo session for RTL design and functional verification course. The same course can be called as front end training for freshers, or it can be called as functional verification for freshers. Whatever course you call, whether you say RTL design and verification or functional verification or functional verification for freshers or front end training for freshers, all three are exactly the same courses. Because sometimes one student asks me, Do you do asset verification? I can even call this as ASIC verification course. Because all these courses require the same skill set, exactly the same kind of structure. So Hence, we have renamed it in different ways. Other than that, there is a course for experienced people as well. I mean, pressures come with a different skill set. Experienced engineers come with a different skill set. So experienced people already know digital design. They already know very long. Some few things they already know. So they don't have to go through from that level. Hence, there is a different course for them. Other than that, there are individual courses. Like someone is pursuing their BTEC third year. They don't have to go through the six months course because they are already occupied with their semester work, some six, seven subjects, and they won't have time to do full fledged course. Or they have a semester break. So, in that time, they can focus on very large and system with that. So, they can enroll individual courses also. Other than that, today's demo session is also for FPGA design and verification. So, there are a lot of opportunity, opportunities in FPGA domain. Uh, even Today's session is focused on that as well. And other than that, RTL design and integration. You can see here design and functional verification. Here it is design and integration. It's a different aspect of the VLSL. Other than that, design for testability. So today's demo session would give you a brief about all these things. Specific to FPGA, what we will be doing is based on the number of people interested we will be arranging a dedicated demo session to focus on what is covered in fpga subject again we will have a dedicated two hours demo for dft so the how it will be planned is today demo Will be 9 30 a.m. Roughly, it will go to 12 30. It will give you a brief about what is VLSI, what is front end, what is back end, what is functional verification, and mostly it will be focused on 
answering your queries. Then the people who are specific to DFP, people who are specific to FPGA, people specific to RTL integration training, they will have a dedicated two hours demo. Mostly tomorrow it will be planned. I will let you know the time and we will have to understand who are all interested in DFT, who are interested in FPGA. Accordingly, we will inform you. This you can treat as a common session. As I said, 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. DFT demo session timing will, in, will inform you. So, institute overview, I am sure you are aware of what is, uh, the institute and what courses we offer all that not to get into that uh, let us directly start off with understanding uh, various aspects i just gave a brief about myself we have more than 20, 25 plus trainers some of them are permanent trainers some of them are working professionals they provide training over the weekends and then we have permanent staff also that ensures that we are able to get the people who are working in the industry to share their expertise Let's say if I have a permanent faculty in the institute and uh, they will not be updated with the, what is happening in the industry. And mostly whatever knowledge they have five years back, ten years back, the same thing they will teach. At one point it becomes redundant because it won't match the industry requirement. Let's say industry is working on some advanced protocols. We teach very basic protocols. You won't be able to get into the industry and do the work as per the requirements. So hence, this always helps you what is happening in the industry. And generally, they come with an average experience of 10 years, most of the trainers. Now, let us understand what all courses do we offer. Okay, today's demo session, session as you know, it is for VLSI front-end domain. So the front-end domain itself is multiple aspects. You can divide the front-end domain into majorly three aspects. RTL design, RTL integration, RTL verification. Simple, right? Three things designing, integrating, you design, next you integrate, then you verify. Most of the people go for this training. 90% of the training happens in this. Uh, and or I would say 90% of the job opportunities in this time, at least for freshers. If a fresh graduates want to get into the industry and he wants to do something in front-end domain, this is the domain to be in, functional verification. When it comes to RTL design and integration, mostly companies expect people to have experience, around two years experience. So what can be done, let's say you want to specifically get into RTL integration. You have to start with RTL verification, learn on the way you learn integration skill set, then you move into RTL integration. That is the reason why people come to us to enroll for these courses, integration courses. Now, before we get into front-end domain, let's understand what is front-end, what is back-end. I think many times we might have explained to you over the phone call, VLSI is two domains, front-end, back-end, we would have explained to you some other things. Without that assumption, see some might, someone might be joining freshly into today's session without any prior knowledge. So I'll just give you a brief about what is VLSI design, what is front and what is back. So as you know, VLSI is about making chips. You have to manufacture a chip. Okay. Chips are chips can be simple, chips can be very complex. Like mobile phone chip is a very complex chip. Why it's very complex? It's very complex. Why is it complex? Because some billions of transistors being put into one square centimeter or maybe less than that. What is billion means? 100 crore, multi billion actually. 100 crore is only a number. It can be 200 crore, it can be 300 crore. So many transistors are put into such a small piece. Okay. So that 
even if you do one small mistake one transistor is wrong out of 1 billion what is one let's say i have 100 crore rupees if i give one rupee nothing i will lose but same way if i i can't say do the same generalization for transistors if i have 100 crore transistors if i say that one crore transistor one transistor is not working fine it won't be fine my whole chip functionality will get disturbed so hence designing and verification should be done very carefully because it's not just the one chip all the chips that you manufacture will have fault so if i manufacture a laptop like this i manufacture 1000 laptops all 1000 will have faults so then nothing will work right then my whole investment is gone that's why this design flow is very important uh those who are attending online if you have questions please unmute yourself and you can ask the question otherwise please be in mute because without knowing we unknowingly you are disturbing everyone else you don't know you don't notice that there is a disturbance and noise coming from your side but other people are facing the difficulty so please be in mute when you have question unmute ask the question then again go to mute so we were discussing about real estate design that means what there has to be a well structured plan so what is similar to vlsi design flow is house construction if you want to construct a house you just don't start putting the bricks immediately right you have you go through some planning what is the planning first you figure out what is my requirements of the house it starts with what requirements then you approach an architect then you have various people like mestri painter plumber tile plate person many people to get to get the house constructed same way the chip design flow also goes through see uh, one more thing many people have questions i will be answering all those questions i will take around 45 minutes just to give you a brief then i will answer all your questions because once i get into the question and answers i can never come back because question and answers itself will take all the time i just want to give you a brief brief about training the schedule everything then i'll answer all your questions chip design chip design flow also involves around 12 steps sometimes you can even call it as 15 steps i mean see if you ask me how many steps are there in house construction someone may say 10 steps someone else may say 12 steps i may i may consider the same thing as two sub activities so roughly we will say 12 steps these 12 steps starts with requirement where does it starts with requirement what do you want out of the chip do you want it to be used for a mobile phone purpose do you want it to be used for a laptop purpose do you want it to be used for a remote control purpose like that then it goes through various requirements finally what you have is a chip packaged to be packaged in the electronic mode in the final what is this three dots are indicating so many so many steps are there 10 to 12 steps are there in between in stop writing architecture architect then rtl coding rtl design rtl integration this is rtl design i just wrote all those things as dot dot these steps can be majorly divided into two parts it starts with requirements that is a specification rtl design rtl description integration many things finally you have a chip working this is little different from what i have explained this flow majorly can be divided into two parts even if you take house construction you can take house construction as two major parts what is first major part tell me what is the first major part in house construction coming up with the basic building structure 
the way they have in the in front of our institute there is a construction happening basic building structure no plumbing no painting no tiles no carpentry nothing one major phase is what you have just construction construction Second is what? Then you do all the miscellaneous things. Similar to that, I'm not telling same thing you do here. There is nothing like house construction here. You don't paint the chip, right? You don't put any plumbing in there, right? So basically, we can roughly divide the VLSI chip design flow into two aspects. One is called as front end domain, one is called as back end domain. Why we are doing this division is it is to make it easy for you to make a decision. Okay, front end domain job is majorly programming oriented job. Anything you choose in front end domain, let it be RTL design, let it be RTL integration or functional verification, whatever domain you choose, it is mostly programming oriented job. Like in software, we learn C program, C++, or what is after C++? Java, Java, right? That is logically, that is what. Then we have other things, .NET and other things, right? Similarly, in VLSI, we have three things. Verilog, System Verilog, and UVM. There is no big difference. Actually, if you say, whatever is C, similar thing is Verilog. Many similarities are there. Whatever is C++, system very long. Whatever is UVM, sorry. Am I telling both of them are same? No. Similarities are there. See the, why do you move from C to C++? Why do you move from C++ to Java? The same is the reason. Even system very long is a object oriented programming language like c++ is object oriented programming language system verilog is also an object oriented programming language so you like you work when you get into software design software testing job role you work with what c c++ and java when you get into vlsi job role you work with which languages verilog system verilog and uvm when it comes to the back end domain When it comes to the backend domain, there is no programming involved in the backend domain. There is no programming involved in the backend domain. It is completely tool oriented. What is meant by tool oriented? Let's understand. So, VLSI backend domain is tool and technology oriented job. What is meant by tool? What is meant by technology? Let's understand. What we mean by tool is, you see, what is that I said initially? We have to fit in 100 crore transistors into one square centimeter or even lesser. I'll give you a simple example. My laptop, you see, where is it kept? On a table. I have a table on which I have kept a laptop. What else do you see on the laptop, on the table? And those in the classroom, what else, what else do you see in the table? One remote, one remote, one mic, and some one cloth, some four or five items are there. Now, if I ask you to arrange 10 elements on my laptop, my table, you will find it like this. Something here, laptop, here a mic, here something like that. Next. Let us imagine a situation where I have to arrange 100 crore elements. What is my table area? It is roughly 5 square meters, square feet, 6 square feet. Now imagine putting something into 1 square centimeter. How many things you have to put in? 100 crores, not 5, not 10, not 20, not 30, 100 crores. It cannot be done manually. 
means I can't decide this will go here, this will go here, this will go here. I can't do it. So there you require a tool, a software, which will do that work for you. That is called as physical design. That flow starts off with something called as physical design. You are planning the area. I mean, where to keep what. So that, that technology is what we call as physical design. Let's not get into what is physical design, what is floor plan, what is power plan. There are many things are there. We won't get into it deep. I may touch upon basic concept, but since it cannot be done manually, they use a tool, they use the software. Tool, tool is not the physical tool center. They are the softwares. And what is meant by technology oriented job? We work at a specific technology, 14 nanometer technology, or seven nanometer technology, five nanometer technology. You need to understand what happens at that technology level. Seven nanometer means what? Uh, what all things are involved? What is drain? What is source? What is MOSFET? What is FinFET? What is the gate? How does it work? What are the short channel effects? How to take care of those in my chip? All those problems we talk about, short channel effects, uh, drain induced barrier lowering, uh, uh, what is that? There are many issues are there, right? Pinch off, right? Which you would have studied in basic MOSFETs. All those problems actually we see in the mobile phone also. If you don't take care of them, they, those problems will come in the mobile phone and mobile phone won't work properly. If the problems are there, mobile phone won't, won't work properly. That means what we have to do, we have to find a solution to fix that problem. That is where we need to learn how to how the technology, what is the technology, how what all things we happen at the technology level, how to take care of those things. So here, do you see any programming involved? Are we talking about any programming, very dark programming, system very dark programming? Nothing, right? We are trying to fit everything into a space that is using a tool, and there are some things which we want to make sure that there are no issues in the whole flow. That is where you need technology understanding. So that is where whatever you do in backend domain, backend domain has multiple aspects called as synthesis, design for testability, physical design, static timing analysis, custom layout, physical verification, fabrication. Everything is a tool oriented job. You understand that when I say tool oriented, do you understand? You have to use a software to do the things. First thing. Do you understand what I mean by technology oriented? You need to know the technology. See, 28 nanometer technology is not same as 5 nanometer technology. They have their own challenges. So you need to understand how does the technology differ when you move from one domain, one, say one length to other length, 28 to 5 nanometer. That is why they need to understand. They don't need any programming expertise. So majorly, VLSI design flow can be divided into what? Two major steps. In turn, if you divide VLSI front-end domain, these are the major steps. How many steps are there? Five major steps are there. Where does it start? Design requirements. What do I want? See, I'm manufacturing a mobile. What do I want? What kind of screen size I want? What is the frequency at which processor should work? What kind of uh, display touch screen it should have? Like that, there may be 50 requirements you can write down in mobile phone. That is what we mean by requirements. Once you have the requirements, you develop the architecture. You, you won't do it. You go to whom? In case of house construction, whom did you go for architecture? There is a person called as architect. House architect, design architect will be there, right? You'll go to him. Here also, there will be someone by name design architect. Chip architect. He will give you the architecture. Like what architecture architect does in house purpose. He will tell where the pillar will come, where the beams will come, what should be the size of each beam. Everything he clearly tells, right? What is the cross section view, what is the uh, top view, everything he gives you. Same way in chip architecture also, he gives many information. That is the starting point for everything you do. Whether you want to do design, integration, verification, everything you want to do, architecture is the Important point. If something is wrong in architecture, will anything work properly? Let's say he missed one beam. Somewhere in the house construction, we missed one beam. Will the house be stable? No, right? Same problem we will face here also. If architecture is missing something also, small thing, the chip won't work properly. 
then what they do is once they have the architecture we use a language called as verilog to do the coding we use some language called as verilog to do the implementation in software what happens whatever software you have we implement that using c program or c++ or java similar to that in vlsi we have three things called as verilog and system verilog uvm i'll talk later using that they develop the code what is meant by developing the code i'll just show you an example let's say i have one what can i take counter are you aware, aware of the term counter what does counter does it counts from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 once it reaches the upper limit it again comes back to 0 in this case even counter can be manufactured as a hard dish or let's take a real more realistic example that you see day to day traffic light control you see any signal you go you will see the traffic light is it a software or is it a hardware traffic light controller is it a software is it a hardware it's a it is a hardware essentially the piece is a hardware it did not get manufactured just like that it's not like they had some uh, molding things and they just put they won't come what they went through is they went through this whole process actually. for traffic light controller also they went through this whole process they first came up with the requirements what is the requirement if red light is there other side should be green if one side is green all others should be red like that they will put the requirements if it is in red it should be in red for 30 seconds if it is green it should be in green for 50 seconds if it is yellow it should be yellow for five seconds they would have written all those requirements as per the requirements someone gives the architecture then we do the coding very long coding now how very long coding is done i'll just show you briefly i'm not going to get deep into it because most of you are new to very long itself like in C program, how do we start? We start like this, right? Any C programming starts like this. Similar to that, very long programming starts with module. Sir, I'm sorry to module. sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but then C programming starts with studio.h and conio.h, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, see, they are called as includes. They are called as include okay. files. Okay, okay, now sorry, sorry to interrupt, sir. What do you want to include? Please tell me. Yes, sir. Yeah, so sorry to yeah. interrupt, but then I just felt that I should give this uh, that this input that it started with studio dot and conio dot what we actually learned in our uh, schools or was other colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does start with that. They are called as includes. That is not the core part of the coding. The core part okay. of C program starts with always main. Okay. Now it is Thank my you, choice sir. whether I include or not. Okay, I can even exclude that. Then few things won't work. That's a different thing. Let's not get into it. Similar to that, in Verilog, what does it start with? What you want to make? I can write traffic light controller. Or I can write PLC. Which one is better? That's why we always go for shortcuts. I won't do this. Then here we write something called as what ports are there? What inputs are there? Traffic light controller will have some inputs like clock and reset. It requires a clock for it to function, for it to count 30, 31, 32. There is no watch inside the traffic light. There is no person sitting inside the traffic light. But it has to count. How will it count? It uses a clock. Then it gives out a count. See what you see in the traffic light controller. Tell me majorly two things you see. What is the light? Red, yellow, green. And what is the current count 37 seconds 36 seconds 35 that you see that is what i'm calling as a count or i can also call state what state is, is it so how many inputs are there for traffic light controller two inputs how many outputs are there 
two outputs. So input clock, input reset. How many outputs are there? Count. Now, why did I write in two separate lines? I'll explain. Count is a multi-bit variable. Let's say my traffic light controller has to be up to 90 seconds. How many bits do I require to represent 90, 90 value? To represent a value of 90 in binary, how many bits are there? 90, 90. How many bits are there? Can I say like this? Does it add up to 90? 64 plus 16, 80, 80 plus 8, 88, 88 plus 2, 90. So the, what does this become in binary? 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. If some of you are not able to follow, don't worry. This is a demo class. All these things will be covered very much from the basics. If some, there will be someone who will be teaching you, take 90, 2, 45, 0, 2, 22, 1, 2, 11, 0. There are, all these things will be taught. When you do this, you will get this. For me, since I am used to it, I don't do this. I directly write like this and I directly convert it. That's something you learn. But because I want to give you a brief overview of what is what, I'm going into little advanced things. But when we start, it doesn't start like this. It starts with a much basic level. Then what we do in this traffic light control is, since it is a, how many bits are required, tell me? How many ones and zeros are there totally? How many are there? Four bits, if I'm not mistaken, sir. Seven are there. Seven, One, seven bits. Seven bits. Seven, seven bits are there. This is what I expect. What I expect in the classroom is basic common sense. What I expect Sorry, is sir. basic common sense. I'm not asking anything different, right? I'm asking you to count. You have to count and tell me how many are there. Seven are there. So since seven are there, it should be six down to zero. Seven means what? Six to zero, right? That adds to seven. Now, state can be how many? Three states are possible. What are the three states possible? Red state, yellow state, green state. I'm not talking about the, not the colors. I'm talking about traffic light states. Red, yellow, green. How many states are there? Total? To represent three variables, how many bits are required? Two bits. To represent three possible states, you require Red means 0, 0. Yellow means 0, 1. Green means 1, 0. So how many bits are required for this? Two bits, right? Two bits. It is either 0, 0, it's either 0, 1, 1, 0. At a very top level, we, I will be coding it quickly. Because this is, I don't want it to be a very long training. I'm just showing you how this is done. Always at positive edge of clock. Begin, end. If reset is one, you make, you write something called as state equal to red. Then we implement some state machine for the else begin end. We use some case state, end case. Here you write red. Something like that. I'm not coding it completely. I'm not coding it completely. The way you implement C program, we implement very large program also. The people who are not able to follow, you don't understand what is this. You don't understand what is this. You don't understand what is this. No need to worry about that. During our training, this part of the things comes almost one month or one and a half month later. Let's say you are joining today. This topic specifically will be covered on the 1st of July. But then why am I teaching this? Because I don't want to teach AND gate or gate now. Then you will feel that demo is very simple. 
we didn't teach anything in demo right i didn't find demo interesting so i want to make it interesting so i'm starting with something where you see the little bit of complexity as you join the training you won't feel any complexity because the learning is gradual it will be done in a very smooth manner this is what we mean by rtl coding rtl design what is it what is this called as rtl design something you do using verilog language is what we call as rtl design that is this step finally it has to be made into a small chip see traffic light controller if you break open it's a chip it finally became this it goes through various stages integration verification synthesis dfd physical design many things but it since it's a very simple chip this whole thing will get over in 7 days or 10 days whole thing can be finished in not even 10 days 2 3 days is sufficient same thing if i take mobile phone mobile phone also goes through the same process same process instead of tlc what it will become instead of four ports how many ports will be there hundreds of ports will be there my mobile phone actually even though you don't see there are lot of ports to it how many lines is it a few around 20 lines is there mobile phone code will be 1 lakh lines 1 lakh or even more hence the complexity increases there the time increases so whatever it took one day there if you go it will take how many days Six months. The whole process will take six months time. So that is what we call as VLSI design. Now I won't get deep into what is what. You should get. You should have got a basic idea about what is RTL code. Those people who are new to coding, who are new to coding, don't worry. Uh, we make the your learning very easy and very smooth. Smooth means what? Not like hard and smooth kind of. A smooth transition will happen where even if you don't know anything, if you have that willingness to learn, you will learn. That is how things have been planned and scheduled. I hope you got an idea. So let's not get into what is physical design, what is HDF, because most of you are here to listen about front end domain so i will only talk about this thing did you get an idea about what rtl design what is meant by rtl design like this developing a code doesn't it look similar to english input what is output what is input always positive edge of the clock if reset is applied what to do else what to do that is all thing being explained this is called as rtl design now somewhere let's say i have done a mistake somewhere let's say i have done a mistake the process of catching that mistake is called as functional verification see here if i do one one mistake i'll tell you can you see the mistake what is the mistake and should have been double equal even if i show you this code almost visible directly If you spend two minutes, you can see that line number nine has a mistake. You can tell that line number nine has a mistake. If I give you one lakh lines of code, will you be able to tell? No, right? You won't be able to see the code and tell. Okay, this is correct. This is correct. This is wrong. You can't tell that. It has to follow some process. That process is what we essentially call as functional verification. so what is functional verification means the process of catching the bugs in the design is called as functional verification so what is design what is the design i'm talking about this is the design i'm talking about uh, sir Our sorry I, to disturb you i i have pointed out the mistake can i just tell you yeah 
sir below green begin the you have typed as edn it should be end and that is the reason it is coming in black color rather than coming in red color if you see below green yellow green you have written edn That's it so should easy. be end what, what i'm telling so is this, let's not this can help us speaking. this can help us trace the mistake okay fine thank you no let's not get too much deep into it my point is at times typing mistakes is fine i mean we are not developing actual code all that right but sir this can but this this tool can help us uh, find a mistake am i correct sir the color the color changing yes 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 of course yes thank color you. changing can help us find the mistakes yeah yeah thank you sir thank you uh we were talking about what is rtl design this is what we mean by design so the process of catching any mistakes in this code is called as functional verification now whatever mistake he pointed i forgot his name this would have got caught during the compilation stage when you compile it itself like you, have you done any c programming before in c program you do compilation right during the compilation itself you will catch that you don't need to go to the actual verification stage compile compile itself sees that edn is mistake there is nothing called as edn So it'll tell you. You have to go and fix it. But still, it's a good point. Thank you for that. Uh, coming back to this. So the process of catching these bugs is what we call as functional verification. So the functional verification goes through various stages. Sir, shall I ask one question? Yeah. sir functionality verification is the verification of code or syntax checking sir it's checking verification of the code syntax okay. syntax checking happens during the compilation during the functional okay. verification you actually check the functionality by mistake let's say you wanted to do count equal to count plus 1 actually what happens eventually how it works is count equal to count plus 1 if count equal to 50 let's say you want to be in red for 30 seconds then next state will be yellow by mistake someone has done minus 1 while coding instead of doing plus 1 what they have done minus 1 so this yes. 30 will never happen my design won't yes. so as i said if i show you this code and ask you what are how many mistakes are there in this code how many mistakes are there in this code tell me two which line number first mistake line number 9 second mistake line number 15 this you can tell because there are only 20 lines of code is there but when you go to complex designs there will be thousands of lines of code and thousand tens of files are there i'll show you one such example yes sir thank you how many files are there here 58 files these are all design files actually if you see one of these files how many lines are there 50 lines okay of course this is a little bigger file then there are smaller files also which is roughly 100 lines because initially i have some comments if you remove those things it's around 70 files 70 lines but the point i am trying to show you is the code can be very big since so many files are there all of them are actually making up something called as dma controller have you heard of the dma controller any time sometime during your btech you might have heard dma it is important in processors direct right? memory access DMA. this is the dma controller we are talking so dma controller to develop it requires almost 58 files finally this is what makes up the dma controller files. now if i tell you i open this code go through this code and tell me where are the mistakes is it possible like you said there line number 9 and line number 15 has a mistakes here if i tell you 
Tell me where is the mistake? Someone has done a mistake instead of minus one. Someone has done plus one. Now tell me mistake. Is there any mistake in that line? You can't tell like that. It is not possible to tell. This is correct. This is wrong. It's not possible. It has to go through a specific process. That process is what we are calling as functional verification. That functional verification goes through various stages, called as reading the design specifications. listing down features and scenarios what is meant by features and scenarios what do you want to verify if i give you a laptop and ask you to verify a laptop check whether laptop is working fine or not what will you check tell me let's start what will you check okay. the first process will be booting booting okay next what will you check Keyboard is working fine or not. Simple things. USB is working fine or not. Whether HDMI is working fine or not. Whether the reset button is working fine or not. Whether the uh, what else? VGA port it's is working fine system. or not. BIOS. Okay, whatever. Right. All those things are working fine or not. You check. See what you are talking from is a software perspective, embedded system software perspective. I am talking from a hardware perspective. Okay. So you will check all those things. Similarly, whenever I give you a design, there will be few things that you have to verify. Let's say laptop is there. Without checking keyboard, can I say that keyboard laptop is working fine? No, right? Same way, all the design features need to be verified. If you miss something, then the design that design is not completely verified. If you miss any feature, let's say in my laptop, I didn't check USB. Can I say laptop is good? The same thing so that's why they list on the features then they list on scenarios how am i going to check the keyboard i will press a immediately in one second i'll press 20 times will it work see i'll do one thing here i'm pressing 20 times in a second will it work then i'll press once twice and i'll come up with different scenarios in which keyboard can be verified both are checking keyboard only but in different possibilities that is what we call as features and scenarios then you come up with something called as test plan means you you do the planning how you are going to verify the testing plan i want to verify laptop randomly i won't just apply right i will have to come up with a plan how i am going to check the laptop what i am going to connect how will i check keyboard everything that is what we call as test plan then we come up with something called as test bench architecture what is meant by test bench is something that is used around my laptop to verify the laptop to apply the inputs to collect the outputs and to check whether everything is working fine we use test bench architecture what is meant by test bench architecture is a simple concept i'll tell you you have a laptop let's imagine the laptop only What do you think I have drawn? Sorry? Table. table. I have drawn a table. Then what do I what I will do? I have kept my laptop on that. Then there will be some ports here. Right? Laptop has some ports. If I just keep the laptop on my table. Will it verify itself automatically? All right, someone has to do something for it to verify. That is what we call as the test bench. See, what test bench does is it applies some inputs to these ports. Someone has to apply inputs, right? Without that, it won't check. Someone has to collect the outputs and check whether it's working fine or not. That whole thing, this whole thing is what we call as test bench. This is called as design under test. If you take first alphabet, what is it? First alphabet of each word, what is it? D U T. 
that's why it's called as dut you will come across a term called as dut when you get into vlsi people will keep always talking dut 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 what is dut design under test the design that you are testing is the dut in my case what is dut laptop is my dut what is my test bench my table is the test bench i keep something that will apply these inputs into the my laptop got it right this cannot be done manually we go through some process called as we develop some components here we develop some components called as bf driver generator monitor functional coverage reference model scoreboard sorry checker assertions slave model and scoreboard how many components did i write no, totally how many elements i have written nine nine so test bench is basically made up of this nine elements how do i understand that if i ask you one house is made up of how many types of rooms any house you take it can consist of probably six types of rooms or seven types of rooms balcony hall kitchen dining room bedroom bathroom like that if i write down there are seven eight categories of rooms any house you take even a house with 100 floors will eventually can be divided into those those rooms only same way any test bench you take in the world can be made up of these components only. just that some test benches will have three drivers simple test benches will only have one drive you you're getting the point right so finally what we do is we come up with the architecture diagram that is what we do right test bench architecture so how does that architecture roughly look like i think i may have in my diagram how does architecture look like something like this see this is bfm means driver actually generator functional coverage monitor reference model checker scoreboard various components now probably you won't be able to understand anything out of it but understand that we come up with something like this now there is no point me teaching what is bfm what is this m stands for what is generator what is test case idea is to give you a brief about what you are going to learn in next 6 months i'm trying to give you a brief of i'm trying to capture 6 months or 7 7 months into one hour time so that you have a bigger picture of all things okay we come up with this kind of bag as you have more, as my design gets more complex like these are called as interfaces how many interfaces are there in my dut two clearly you can see right one two as i increase the number of interfaces do you think will it be same or will it the complexity increases increases right you will need more components to connect it my architecture also will increase but whatever you do whatever you do this is all what you can use there is nothing else other than this i mean any test bench can be made up of driver these nine components once you have done we then do something called as test case development see test bench architecture is like setting up the things around my laptop so that i can apply inputs into the laptop i can apply input, i mean i can use those components to apply inputs to the laptop collect the outputs and check whether everything is happening properly or not but then you have to apply the inputs right you have to generate the inputs that is called as test cases like i said i am going to type continuously this is one type of input then i will say abc 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 is one way of checking keyboard whether it's working fine or not these are all called as test cases applying different inputs to the my design is called as test cases then what we do is we set up something called as regression regression means running all the test cases together is a regression uh, please just take a look at this diagram once
okay so we were talking about regression then there is something called as functional coverage closure we have to close the verification right i need to say let's say you give me laptop i can't tell that i will keep verifying this laptop for 100 years what is the problem then no one will use laptop laptop will only be with me only for testing purpose somewhere i have to say that i am done with the verification right not functional functional verification closure i need to say that now i have verified the laptop now you can use it these are the these are the faults that whole process is called as functional verification flow the flow that we follow probably you didn't understood the term regression i will explain in a very simple terms like to check laptop you have listed down 40 possibilities keyboard checking usb checking uh, sd card checking like if you run all those checks at once continuously it's called as regression what is regression you have 40 checks to do on laptop just you check all of them one one after another continuously that becomes regression i mean running all test cases together one after other it's called as not a complex term right the term is difficult to understand but what we do is simple you run everything together why do you run everything together just to check what is passing what is failing whatever is failing then you do the debug failing test debug then we tell to the design team that this is not working they will fix it let's say in laptop you say that shift is not working right you bring it you send it to the repair shop they will fix shift and give you then again you will check multiple things so what might have happened while fi fixing the shift they may have disturbed something else that's where regression is important this is the process essentially our training six months or seven months training is to make you perfect with this and i initially i told you that the front end domain has three aspects design integration and verification so when i say rtl verification i am also talking about what functional verification i am also talking about asic verification i am also talking about rtl design verification are there is there any difference in these four terms no difference right so that's the reason we have diff four different terms but we do essentially the same thing now coming back to this if the chip is simple let's say the chip is traffic light controller this whole thing can be finished in one hour only one number if the chip is very complex let's say mobile phone chip like you go to qualcomm to 30 people working in a team they take seven eight months to complete a project 30 people how many people 30 people working together planned manner they take how many months roughly eight months to complete the same mobile phone verification that mobile phone method so it's all about if things are simple it gets over quickly if the things are complex it will take now imagine instead of 30 people one person is doing the work in qualcomm what would have happened what would happen it took 30 people 30 people took eight months what one person will take now tell me how many roughly how many months it will take 240 months right see 30 people doing a job in eight months one person doing a job how many days it will take 240 months 240 months is how many years 20 years right one one year is 12 months 240 divided by 12 is 20 years so what does it mean they will come out with one chip now if they start in 2020 they will come out with chip in where 2040 roughly i'm just giving it's not going to be the case that's the reason they put a lot of people to make sure that they complete the process quickly that is where we require industry requires lot of verification engineers because things are very complex 
there are many blocks we need to verify each block even if there is one fault is there i told you one statement right out of 100 crore transistors if one transistor is mistake it won't work out of many complex thing one simple thing is wrong it won't work so hence we need lot of people to do the verification now you may say what about rtl design what about rtl integration thing what happens in rtl design integration is mostly reuse happens you want to develop something whatever is existing they will use and develop the design even in rtl integration so you don't need you don't need many people there because they do something called as reuse we do something called as reuse existing things only they will use and they will develop the whole product to reuse you don't need many people right so rtl design mostly requires less people here also you require less people but this requires a lot of people that is where you see a lot of job opportunities for functional verification domain So that's a brief about uh, what is the time now? 10.45. Let us do one thing. Let's take a 10 minutes break. Once we meet after the break, we'll continue with the session. So those attending online, we, we are taking a 10 minutes break. That means we'll meet, uh, meet by 10.50.
We will resume the session now. So the I was talking about, we were talking about functional verification flow. Then we discussed about why industry requires a lot of verification engineers because everything needs to be verified. Uh, whereas other domains in front end don't require a lot of people. Now, coming back to the presentation. And I hope you got a basic idea about. Uh, what is front end domain? What is back end domain? Back end domain doesn't involve any programming, it's more of tool and technology oriented job. Some misconceptions will be there in people like VLS and domain is tough, it is difficult to get a job in VLS. It's not that, it is actually uh, that six months effort is important. The only problem with VLSI, I'll tell you, VLSI, what is difficult part? In software, what happens is, even if you learn Java, but to learn Java, of course, you need to have C, C++ knowledge. With this skill set only, you can get a job. Job you can get. Many times people, just by learning Python, 
You might have seen, right? Just by learning Java, Python only, they, they get it. But when it comes to VLS side, you have to learn Verilog, you have to learn SV, you have to learn UVM. Then you have to learn some protocols. Then you have to do some projects. This additional thing is what makes it a little difficult. You have to learn something called as protocols. Like you might have heard of protocols like USB protocol, DDR protocol, AXI protocol. Some protocols are there. Some of these you may not have heard of. And you need to do projects based on those protocols. More you learn, more opportunities and better. You can get job with this itself. That much knowledge also you can get job without learning any protocols, without learning any, doing any projects also you can get a job. But you will have to settle for a lower salary. That is what happens in the software. Since software, you know C, C++, Java, you get one type of salary. One, one kind of salary. You know what else people can do? Can you tell me? Other than that, what can you do? You can learn algorithms. There are many algorithms in software domain, right? Bubble sorting algorithms, right? Various types of things are there. Then learn how to implement this algorithms, how to come up with a bigger designs using these algorithms. With all these things and the pro some projects if you do, you get a better sense. Eventually, what does it mean? You spend more effort in learning the things, you will get better job and better self. That is what actually holds for VLSA also. The training will be a little tough when you will have to learn more things. But the better part is you have better opportunities and better self. What happens in VLSA is both software and VLSA people start with the same salary many times. Sometimes VLSA people start with a lesser salary compared to software. Let's say if you go to Wipro for a software HCL, let's take them, they may pay 3.8 lakhs or 3.5 lakhs to start. In VLSA, there are companies who will pay only 2 lakhs, who will only pay 2.5 lakhs. But if you look four years or three years after, a software engineer can probably, who is there in that company, may be getting around 4.2. 3.5 would have become. And he moves to a different company, he may get around 6 lakhs. Due to, due to the growth height, or 5.5, 6. In VLS side, he may start with 2 only, actually. 2 or 2.5, it's possible, very much possible, actually. His salary might be 4.2 only, but when he switches, he can get problems. Or sometimes it can be anywhere between. Now I have one student whom I met three, four days back. He got 28 lakhs in microchip. He got into microchip less than not even three years because he completed our training in 2019. He completed our training in 2019. Then he got into the job. He started with the services company. Now he got into a microchip. He gets 28 lakhs. And he joined in where? Around April first week he joined. I'm telling what is there. Then there are people who are getting only 8 lakhs also after 3 years. So it's all about how he learned and how he did it. So the point is so that is what VLS side domain can do for you. That is what the knowledge can do for you. It's not the VLS side, it's the knowledge is what can do for you. So when we provide the training, our focus is not job. Our focus is quality education, basically to, to develop that passion in you to learn. 
whatever I teach, whatever my other trainers teach, we try to make sure that every one hour counts for you. If you see, if you go back 9.30 to 12.30, if you ask yourself, what is that I learned today? There will be significant things learned every day. If I ask you during your four years of B.Tech, what you learned? From the time you passed out of your inter or plus two and you passed out of college. I'm not sure how many things you can tell. There may be a lot of things you learned. Maybe very few things you learned. But I can probably tell you that this six months you may learn many things more than what you learned in four years of your bit. So our focus first won't be on job. Does it mean that I won't give job, I won't give jobs? No. My point is when it comes to the job, it doesn't matter whether you are in X Institute, whether you are in Y Institute or whether you are in Z Institute. Your knowledge is what gets you the job. It's not the institute which gets you. So our focus primarily remains on giving you the quality education. So how do we ensure that quality education? How do, first thing, how does quality comes? A proper planning. How the quality is ensured? When I say quality education, what do you mean by that? The assessment of the students. Longer duration. The time only things happen, right? If I if I have to teach whatever knowledge I covered in one hour, if I try to teach in 10 minutes, what will happen? You won't learn, right? So what we do is we teach almost my course goes for seven months, many times. My course at least. Leave aside physical design DFT. My courses goes for seven months. And I don't mind spending seven months. Because for me, someone getting a job, I mean, I believe that I have a lot of responsibility. Uh, there is a trust with which someone joins the institute. There is a responsibility as a trainer, as a person who has set up this institute has a responsibility. I keep that in mind. I never compromise on the content. I never compromise on the quality of the depth of the topics. Longer duration. Assessment of the students we do. The quality of the content. The, the depth of the content is always maintained which you will never get in English. Uh, I mean, I, would, I should not say never get that becomes overconfidence. At least no one is offering as of today. This is where we will do. My point of looking at is once you have this, you will eventually get a job. If the market is good, you will be the first one to get a job. For sure. That is where we have had a very good placements. And my, currently, my situation is that uh, we are not able to find the candidates to provide to the companies. I'll, I might show some examples. Okay. Mm. And the other fact about this is uh, the industry even recognizes our training program. Recognizes doesn't mean that they give any certificate or they give any award. Not like that. What I mean by industry recognizes is as of today, on a given day, I teach eight company employees. There are like what these companies do is eight company employees means not eight employees. One company hires ten freshers. They directly give to us. They give us six months time. Now after six months, they will continue go back to the company and start working. Because company don't want to spend a lot of resources on training internally. See, training 10 people is very difficult. Whereas if, as an institute, when, it, when I teach 400 people, it's very easy for me in a year. Or 500 people, it's very easy. So that is where, as of today, we have partnered with multiple companies where, in a same batch, there are people from four different companies. In fact, that process is going on where those people also will be joining this training program. The one which I'm going to start today or this week, they'll be joining. What does it mean is, there are, this is the confidence that companies place in our training. Now, where does the depth of, when I say depth of the content, what does it mean? Let's talk about it. When I teach Verilog language, most of the institutes, 
to my knowledge they stop at teaching only very long language language means what what is module what is task what is function what is procedural blocks different different things will be there when you get into very long you will understand for me this is only 50% the remaining 50% is very long design projects that will be the remaining 50% this is where your real learning happens here what do we do what kind of things we do we do fifo we do uh, interrupt controller so various things are there another five six projects are that will give you a significant depth in learning very long the same thing we follow for all other things also uh, i mean i can just open up some of these things this is my system very long presentation one i am showing you I, it will come up This system very log presentation I'm talking about. When I go to system very log training, it is divided into three parts. See, this is a around three and a half months training. It is divided into three months training. Initial one and a half months language, SV language. Around three weeks of project of, of two, two to three weeks of, uh, uh, I would say three weeks will go. AXI project, AXI protocol and project, five weeks of industry standard project. That is how it ran roughly at three and a half months. The presentation I'm talking about, I'm showing you here. It is for one and a half months. We do things in more depth. The number of slides you can see around seven, close to 620 slides planned for around one and a half months duration. I could even make it cut short into 300 actually. It's very much possible because if I can develop something in 600 slides, I can do the same thing in 200 slides also by removing many controls. I always believed in the fact that whoever passes out of the institute and whoever has willingness to learn should become expert with the subject. Not like a superficial, you learn some definitions. I can give you a document with uh, 100 definitions you just memorize you go to interview they'll ask you same questions and you can clear also problem but that is not what is going to make you happy once you get into job you need to be more practical with the approach you should understand the problem you should come up with the solutions this training prepares you in that direction you may not be completely like you can't say that i'll go and do complex project but you will be you will be kind of getting ready for that so how do we ensure that? See, this presentation makes sure that you get more detailed picture of the whole flow, how system will log works, everything. Other than that, what we do is we keep assignments for every topic. Let's say if I go to system will log, I was talking about. We keep around 18 assignments, or in this case, 18 assignments. You will be given guidance for all these assignments. Let's say today I did the theory topic. The next day will be the corresponding lab session, assignment session. Assignment means it's actually coding only, mostly. Each assignment is very detailed, actually. If I take one of my assignments, I will, I'm taking the longest one. I will also show you the shortest one. There won't be like two, three lines. I'll give you do this, do this, do this. A very detailed assignments will be there. I'll probably, if we open one of them, you'll get it. See, this is around. 15 pages assignment. The first thing is you should not fear about this, that how can I complete 15 pages assignment? There will be someone to guide you at every stage. Like, see, why this is so long is I'm writing everything in more detail. What I want you to do, why you want you to do, everything I'm giving in more depth. The good part of this whole assignment is all these things will be guided during the sessions. It's not like you have to sit out your PG or your house and do these things. You'll be doing that. When you come here, there will be a trainer like me who will be telling you question number one, how to do, do you have any questions? That level of guidance also you'll get. 
what these many assignments will do for you is it naturally gives you the required expertise to the subject as long as you do if you don't copy from others if you do yourself you will get that expertise the same way if i go to some other course also let's say very long we have a quite a lot of assignments here how many assignments are there in very lot 23 we don't do so many actually we stop at around somewhere at this point 18 assignments 17 to 18 assignments this is for one and a half months duration again i want to repeat the important point is all these assignments are guided assignments mentor guided assignments on the sessions not like these documents are given to you you just have to do everything by yourself you will be doing wherever you require support there will be someone to support you that is where our sessions will be helpful for you we have sessions live sessions every day it's not like i give you video four hours video you go through weekend i will do one session no that's first thing uh, the second thing is assignments are very structured well structured if i start with the first assignment of very long it starts off with understanding the basic concepts of very long then starts with the simple design coding half adder how you do all those things detailedly i would have given and how to implement full adder how to implement multiplexes so step by step it will be there. so that is just to give you a brief about how a course gets planned actually so let me talk about uh, how this overall training will be divided in. So as I said, overall training is for 28 weeks. That roughly comes to six and a half to seven months. You can say. Initial two and a half months, two months I would say, is for digital design. Later three and a half months is for system very long. Linux and SOC concepts. Later, one month is for UVM and ASIC flow, I mean, scripting, Python. If you can divide it into weeks, it will be much easier actually. You go for nine weeks. We'll go for 14 weeks. We'll go for five weeks. It roughly adds up to what? 28 weeks. Sometimes it may increase by one or two weeks or it may decrease, but even if it increases, you should be happy. Because we are not making you sit, sit idle for one week or two weeks. If it is increasing, it's increasing for a reason. Because we are doing in more depth. If you learn something in more depth, you should be happy. Because you become expert with this subject. You may be thinking, oh, my job will get delayed by two months. That's not how you look at it. How you look at it? Even if I learn for another two months, another three months more, but if I, I become expert with the subject, I'll get a better job. I'll get a job with better salary. I, again, I can tell you, I can wind up this whole thing in 18 weeks. It's possible. Many times I finish my system with log training in 16 hours. I have completed in four days. Like I did for Microsoft employees two days back they are from us okay i finished whole system well again 16 hours four days only that also i can do but then that's a different requirement here there is a different requirement here my requirement is to make sure that if i have 30 students many of them at least 28 29 of them should do really well in the career that's what is how we have planned training and I've just given you the plan and how the training is done is the training is basically two categories full week training weekends only there are two categories or okay so full week training is six days per week Sunday off 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Or 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. sometimes. Mostly we target for morning. 
mostly every session is targeted for morning schedule sometimes it can shift to afternoon because it's not always possible to do everything in morning because trainers are limited rooms rooms are not a limitation but trainers is a limitation at, at some time i may have to do two batches i can't do both at 9 30 right sometimes you may have to keep for afternoon slot but these are the two slots if it is only weekends only training what we do is provide access to all the course videos for for whole duration then weekends revision assignment and lab support sessions this is for working professionals now mostly this will go for how many hours four hours not eight hours i generally don't purposefully i avoid doing eight hours training now what time we started this training 9 30 if i tell you you'll have to sit and listen to me till 6 30 in the evening how does it work no right at one what what will happen by 12 you will feel okay now it's getting it getting right at one you will say no i can't after one o'clock whatever i teach it won't go into your head at one after one point i will only forcefully be teaching you won't be able to learn so hence we never plan weekend session to be eight hours as much as possible unless it is kind of compulsion that is where what we do is we provide access to all the course videos for whole duration the working professional they watch the videos during the weekday their free time any time it is 24 to 7 they can access and during the weekends we have the revision sessions assignments and lab sessions even in the full week training you get access to every session video for at least one week duration that means what let's say you attended today's session whether you attended or you didn't attend you will be able to go through this video for one week duration that's an opportunity for you to Excuse me, sir. I'm not able to hear you. You have lost your signal, it seems. I'm also facing same problem, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, actually, internet is uh, there is some issue with the internet connectivity, so I have connected through my mobile tethering. So please let me know if you face any issues with the audio. Okay. Now, so I was talking about Google Drive link. Yeah, where you need to submit assignments, and this will be tracked. It is to make sure that it is not to tell that you are good, you are bad. It is to make sure who is seriously putting effort and who is not putting effort, what kind of support they need. Idea is I'm not going to, 
I am not here to trouble a student. We are here to understand the problems faced by a student and see what is the solution that can be provided to some extent. Finally, students need to have that motivation that I should learn and I should get better with the career. Other than that, there will be around five assessment tests, five to six assessment tests. One after digital design, one after Verilog language, one after Verilog projects, one after system Verilog language, one after system Verilog projects, one after UVM training. So totally you can say six assessment tests. Now why we conduct this test is, if you completed digital design, but you don't know anything about digital design, let's say you score 20 marks out of that. Should I allow you to proceed further? No, right? Even if you proceed further, you won't learn anything. So I make you repeat the course. Repetition, no additional cost. I'm not going to tell again paper digital design, no. It is to make sure that you come up to the level, then you come, move on to the further top. Same thing for very large language. Once very large language is done, we conduct one test. Based on some minimum score criteria, we will allow you to move to the further top for the students. That's how assessment tests will be done. And now when it comes to the placements, we are very well connected with the companies. Uh, companies many times hire from us. We have signed up with many companies, product companies also for hiring purpose. Uh, Samsung, even Boeing, we have signed Micron, Microchip. They do send us requirement. And of course, all other services companies do hire from us, like HCL, Wipro, Tech Mahindra. Uh, all these major companies do hire from us. We had a very good placements, at least in last one and a half years. You might have heard it's not just in VLS. Across the domains, hiring is very good. Even in software, any domain you go, hiring is very good. So, we don't give any 100% commitment. Many times in the phone call, they will ask, do you give 100% commitment? I haven't seen the person. I don't know how he will come and prepare here. Right? How can we give 100% commitment? It's not possible. Right? First, we have to see. If you join, after three, two, three weeks, I can tell you whether you, what is your chance of getting job. After seeing you for two, three weeks, I can tell you. But if a person doesn't put any effort and he doesn't do much of it, then no institute can do anything. That is how placements work. But only one thing I can tell is whatever opportunities some other institute gets, 99% that opportunity comes to our institute with us. You won't miss any, you won't give, you won't miss any opportunity. And as I said, the differentiating factor will be the, the quality and depth of the subject you are going to learn is what is going to make a big difference to you. And uh, how uh, this will overall help is the kind of projects we do will make a significant difference to you. We do some uh, overall, we do nine projects. Some during very long training, some during system very long training, some during UVM training. That is where we are really well connected with many companies. I told you, right, what, what is the model we are doing now these days is the company selects the candidate. I mean, we help the company select the candidates that who are in the final year or who have completed their graduation. The company itself sponsored their training. The candidate doesn't pay even a single rupee. After the training, after six months of the training, the company hires them. In this whole process, the candidate doesn't spend any. Now, what is that you need to see is it is helping the company. But then why they are partnering with us is they believe that we can do that value addition. See, they could have done same thing themselves, right? They don't have to spend money to train them here. What they believe is our whole structure and the projects and what we are going to teach, the kind of projects we teach. Let's say we teach AXI protocol, HP protocol, APB protocol, SPA, I2C, some Ethernet Mac protocol. All these things gives more in-depth exposure to the candidate and those candidates can be readily select, used for the projects that company works on. So that way. Now what it has done for us is there are some companies where we are very well connected. 
see if someone is giving me money and tell me that hire i mean train these people they will also hire people if i prefer them right if i refer these are good they will hire so that level of connectivity we do have and uh, i regularly do and the other differentiating factor in our institute is we have some 15 plus courses which are very which are quite unique Uh, I'm not talking about the regular Verilog, regular system Verilog, regular UVM courses. I'm talking about some courses on ARM architecture, RISC-V architecture, PCIe protocol, USB protocol, DDR protocol, SOC courses, low power courses, GLS courses, Red Hawk courses. Many courses are there like that. Around 15 to 20 courses are there, which are quite unique. These courses are mostly targeted for working professionals because a fresher doesn't need any of this. What it does for me is I'm also connected with experienced professionals. That helps us get more opportunities because someone is already working. They know that the institute offers a good training, good opportunity, I mean, good quality training. It also helps us well connected with the companies. So it is just to give you about a brief about how we plan the training, what kind of projects we do, and uh, what is little bit unique things about our institute, right? So that's about it. And when does the placement support start? It starts from the sixth month of training. From the sixth month of training. You don't need to wait till seven months or 28 weeks. From the sixth month itself, you can start off your training process. Any questions you have? So now I will take up some question answers. So someone was asking, let me start with the, okay. Let's start off with the first question. So what is the first question? Can mechanical engineer graduate do this course of years? I don't suggest because only 10% of companies will consider you. Better not to do. When you see your chances are immediately coming down to 10% maybe at max 10 to 15 that is still bad right it's better not to do you are going to face two problems first is you are being a mechanical engineering graduate you don't have that electronic engineering affiliation i mean you haven't studied any time you don't know what is and get or get also starting off at that level the course will go for one year for you 10 months at least you can't finish it in six six months at the same level of expertise what electronics engineer can get on top of that then the companies may not consider all that what is one possible solution i can just drop it okay sometimes i tell things which are not very uh, genuinely correct which should not be told in the open public you have to undergo training some consultancies give you experiences you have to manage one and of some experience okay i tell like this don't take wrongly uh, because i have to be to, to the point i should not go around around and tell something rather be straightforward mechanical engineering with that some experience in some concept, then companies don't see your back once you show one year experience some consultancy your engineering background doesn't matter whether you are msc or diploma or even mechanical they will see because at that point, once you have one, one and a half or two years experience, your ex project expertise makes the difference, is what is looked into, not your degree, not your percentage. Any other questions?
sir i have a doubt i have a question uh i had completed my engineering 2015 yeah and then i did uh, two years of teaching in an uh, engineering college yeah after that due to some medical conditions i was unable to do any job yeah so my question is can i get uh, a job through this program yes okay uh, i will answer your question okay first let me answer this question mca candidates here also same suggestion because a company directly won't hire an mca candidate let's say if i ask hcl people they clearly tell me btech mtech candidates bme with this much percentage rate if i tell we have an mca candidate can you consider they will not they will send so sir anything related to electrical anywhere in your degree electrical is there they will consider that's what electronics are instrument see either keyword electrical is there or electronics is there they will consider so so who is eligible even computer science csc triple e ec ei what else is there sometimes electrical engineering they call it as all these domains are eligible if at all mca candidate has to get in they have to manage some experience learn on par with that experience and then get in someone having a teaching background 2015 pass out is it possible to get a job it is quite possible so how it works is you join the training you gain expertise there are many companies who hire people with education gap only they purposefully hire the people with gap and what they do is the company provides the training i mean they will uh, find in your career profile i mean they, what they will do is they will provide you some additional training on top of what we do then they will project you as an experienced person for client projects and that's how they hire you. and uh, teachers are the best people to join training actually i'm telling you. and my success ratio with teachers has been I'm saying 90%. Anyone who comes from teaching background, 90% because I don't want to say 100%. 100% is a very dangerous term, so I don't want to write term do the term 100%. So I, that's where I'm stopping at 90%. But what I mean by writing 90% is success ratio has been significantly high for teacher. Because what is the problem with teacher is, I'll tell you the problem. You are all know that. after 10 years experience their salary is around 50000 i mean nothing offensive they deserve a lot better actually they know what does it take what it takes to get better salary they know that factor i mean someone working for 10 years getting 50k they know what does it take, what what does it mean by getting a better salary freshers don't know that fresh graduates don't know that someone who has passed out of btech mtech hasn't seen that real life these people have seen that in 10 years they have already seen they have faced it so they immediately that seriousness comes and they don't switch jobs very easily they are stable if the company offers let's say 10 lakhs tomorrow they'll stick with the company for at least 3 years without again someone tomorrow offers 11 lakhs they won't go even my teachers do the same they can get better salaries actually they don't do because they like in like the stability mostly that's where i have seen they had 90% success rate because companies also hire very actively hire because what company wants is not a very smart not a very top class candidate someone who can do the job and someone who is stable not like someone gives you another 10% more you switch that's not what companies always want a stable people it's even for fresher sample okay that stability is very important for you because initially you may switch five jobs after 10 years your career is completely disrupted no one will hire you for bigger roles so that's the thing i hope it answers your question so in summary yes your training this training can help you in two ways it can help you one is to get a job it can help you one is to reskill your profile it can help you because even when you are teaching you require skill set on par with the industry requirements what is happening in the industry because you have to stay relevant for what is 
happening in the industry. That way, even in your college, you will have a better profile. But if you are, let's say you have quit the teaching and you want to get into the training, get into the job, this teaching training will help you. How our training will help you is, we have some projects, which if you do, you can confidently say, I am two to three years experience. You may be a fresher. You may have not have done anything at all till that point. After six and a half months training, after 28 weeks of training, if you learn everything properly, you can get this level of experience. And it is possible. Again, you may ask, how can you do in six months, two years experience? It is possible, right? They don't do anything. They don't invent any new things. It's a 10 years of my experience. I didn't invent anything newly. Same things I was doing in a better manner. Same thing, what five years experience person doing, I was doing the same things pretty much. In a better manner, in a more efficient manner, with, with little more knowledge. That knowledge can be gained in 28 weeks. Right? You know, right, 25 year person is a founder of a company. He might be employing 50 year old person. It's possible, right? Same thing you can do. So we can always help you get that passion. Develop that passion and learn with the passion. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next I got placed in Capgemini, asked for two years agreement. Can I take up this job and learn the DFT course along with it? Is the course compatible for working professionals as well? Even after learning two years, will companies consider me to hire? The first thing is in this profile, in this case, she's talking about Capgemini, right? Capgemini itself is a big VLS second. I mean, they are into many domains. They have one very, very big VLS division. There are two possibilities. You learn DFT. Just go and talk to the concerned people. They will switch you into the DFT domain itself. It is possible. That is first thing about being in Capgemini. Then about two years agreement. These days, pretty much everyone takes agreement. 90% of the people, 90% of the companies take agreement. So there is nothing to worry about two years agreement. Because you should be happy actually. Why you should be happy? You will be stable. You don't have to think about switching anywhere else. You just have to focus on only learning at that point. Then after two, three years, you'll have to worry about switching. So you won't have any distractions. You can only focus on learning. Can I take up a job? Yes, you can take up a job. Learn the DFT. It is possible. Now it is more relaxed for you because you don't have to worry about job. You don't have to worry about completing the training in six months duration. Instead of six months, you spread it to one year time. You spread it to one year time. See, you may be analyst. I mean, you may be getting into some other profile. You may be doing a HR job, for example, or you may be doing a net, net, network, anal, uh, network administrator or some other thing or software engineer. Doesn't matter because the job won't keep you busy for 12 hours in a day. If you do properly, you can finish off your job in seven to eight hours. Remaining two, three hours in a day, you focus on other course, DFT course. Instead of six months, you plan your learning for 12 months or 10 months. Uh, time to time, give a break and see, re re revisit whether you are good with the subject. So, what is the solution here? What can be done? Instead of six months, plan for 12 months training. Sorry, 10 months training. Now you may ask, how can it be possible with six months course? How can we be stretched? That is where you can go for e-learning course. E-learning is a very well-structured course. I will just show you how the e-learning works. So we have a portal by name in skill where uh, you get access to this is like a udemy is there right similar platform for us our platform is in skill.in it's more but currently it's mostly targeted for vlsi domain courses but we might have some other new courses coming right now it's vls so i will just show you how these videos will be structured that way what you can do is you by going through the self-paced courses you can plan your learning for 10 months training gradually. I mean, you keep targeting such a way that 10 months only I'll do. 
because sometimes you have to be realistic what is uh, if someone who is completely free can do in 6 months you can't do the same thing in 10 months right while doing a job because someone who is fresher has a full day to do the things but you don't have you have only maximum 3 hours in a day that is why you need to plan for 10 months and we can make it possible for you i'm not going to tell that 6 months fee is 40000 or you need to pay 10 months 60000 month it's still the same fee it's still the same support you will still get the same placement support also all the time trying to see is how can i make sure that it is convenient for the student at the end as a business i have to make my business convenient to the customers customer is student here so here once okay i think i am in mobile internet let me not get into it uh, only thing is just understand that the videos are quite well structured they are divided on a specific topic basis they come with the detailed assignments for each topic notes the presentation everything is there that will ensure that your learning will be smooth when i say e learning it won't won't be just not just videos i'm not just going to be videos you will be connected with a trainer in a individual like in this case harshita she will be connected with a trainer and she will be connected with our support staff she needs any technical support she talks to the trainer he gives the support if it is non technical our support staff will be. that will ensure that during this whole 10 months study there is someone to support i am not going to tell that now you enroll not after 6 months you will still continue to get the support that way your learning quality will improve and eventually once you complete this two i mean you may if everything goes fine you can switch inside the cap gemini itself because they have a situation where they are not able to hire dfd people right now even if they are going to five four five institutes they are not able to get the candidates you can always do that in the cap gemini or otherwise after two years you show your profile as if you worked in dfd not as an analyst because in cap gemini what happens everyone is an analyst they may not give different different names right you can with that experience you can always switch and you can even switch not as a fresher you can switch as a two years experience person does it answer your question what is the next question what is the difference between design and verification course and dft course the so design verification course this is one course and this one is both are in back end see front end and back end is only for our reference purpose okay in the industry if you go i mean back end i mean front end no one understands that what is our definition of front end is definition our definition is domain which requires programming expertise what is back end means domain which requires tool and technology expertise that's the basic definition now dft if you say dft happens in front end also i mean it happens before the synthesis also after synthesis also so i can't even i can't say that it's a front end i can't say that it's a back end but if i have to go by this terminology design verification is a front end course because it requires programming expertise dft is a back end course it doesn't require any programming expertise now the question comes what is dft okay then someone asked dft course structure i will explain everything dft stands for design for test you see everywhere they are using i mean uh, abbreviations dft right what is dft is about used for detecting manufacturing defects see when you manufacture a chip what is that manufacturing we are doing i told you same thing 100 crore plus transistors into One square centimeter. 
when you are trying to man manufacture so many things, there can be small faults out there, are possible. Wiring fault, any, imagine what is the level we are talking about. There, those faults are called as stuck at faults, at speed faults. So there are like that, maybe another three, four categories of faults inside the chip. When these faults happen, the chip won't function properly. Stuck means what? Some pin is always stuck to zero. Some pin is always stuck to one. What is an example? Light is there here. It is always on. Whether you switch on or switch off, light is always on. Is it correct? Is it good? All right. Similar thing is called a stuck at faults. Stuck at one means that light is always on. Whether you switch off, switch on, doesn't matter. Stuck at zero means what? Light is always off, whether you switch on, switch off. So, out of this 100 crore transistors, 100 crores at one, even if one transistor has stuck at faults, or even if one transistor has at speed fault, chip won't work. Because everything is interconnected. This input goes to the next stage. This input goes to the next stage. So, if this input is not good, next whole stages will be disturbed. Hence, the process of figuring out these faults in the chip is what we call as design for testability. You need some person who will come up with a process where he will be able to detect whether the chip is good or chip is bad. Is there any manufacturing defect in the chip? For that, what he does is the DFT engineer develops some patterns. Patterns means example is something like this. 1010110 like that. These are called as patterns. What he does with the patterns is I have a chip. I apply this pattern to the chip. My output will tell me. So it goes through some stages and finally whatever output comes, it will tell me whether the chip is good or bad. Now you may ask, is it a random pattern? No. It is not any random pattern. There is a specific way they have generated that pattern. That 10110, they have a meaning why they have generated. That finally tells me whether the chip is good or chip is bad. Like that, they generate many patterns, many, many patterns. Through that, they will figure out whether this chip is good or not. So the DFT engineer doesn't sit and do the check, checking of the chip. He won't do. He will generate these patterns. Then there is some technique called as, there are some concepts called as uh, built-in self-test, BIST, scan, insertion, JTAG, the boundary scan. So there are multiple such techniques which are used for detecting the faults in the chip. I hope you got the idea right. What is the what is the role of a DFT engineer? He doesn't sit and do the checking of the chip. He will generate some things, do some things in such a way that that helps the next person. The person who does the checking is actually post silicon validation. What does post silicon validation engineer does? He is the one who takes these patterns. He actually applies these patterns to the chip. And then he will figure out this chip is good, this chip is bad. What is the role of DFT engineer? Generating such patterns is the DFT engineer. Again, it is not like randomly he is drawing a throw, uh, throwing a dice and okay, one, zero, one, not like that. There is some techniques. The techniques are called as BIST, scan insertion, automatic test pattern generation. Different, different concepts are there. Through that, he will do that. And in that process, he will use the software, ED, tools to do that. Then those inputs are taken by post silicon validation to check the behavior. Next question. I hope you got an idea about what is DFT. So that is how DFT is different. See, DFT is for detecting the manufacturing defects. DFT is for what? For manufacturing defects. What is functional verification is for? Detecting the RTL coding coding mistakes. Someone is coding, I'm coding instead of plus, I use minus, instead of zero, I write one. Such coding mistakes I will have to figure out. That is functional verification. They are through different aspects. 
At very basic level, this requires programming. This doesn't require any programming. I live in Hyderabad. I can go through online, but in offline, as we said, offline, the lab practice is more beneficial. Can I, can in online, how can I do that? So point is what, he's in Hyderabad and he wants to do the training. Right now, 90% of students attending one. Okay. Even in this demo session, okay, around 30 people are online. Four to five people are offline so i'm sure online you are able to understand right so you will have similar experience lab session also what is there see the important thing here is in whole vlsi design flow you don't need any hardware you won't be working with any xilinx board you don't be working with any uh, alt uh, fpj board you don't need anything because we are doing asic training in asic training the whole hardware comes once it is fabricated so whatever we have to do, it happens always before manufacturing one. So in all those cases, you don't need to access any board. That means everything can be done in the laptop. At best, what you have to do, you have to connect to our servers to access the tools. Then I can support you. For example, Naren Reddy. I can go here, I can make him. I can make that specific person a presenter. I can make that person a, see, I click here. I can make him a presenter and I can provide the support. I can see what he's, what he's doing. And I can check whether, where is he going wrong. I can check like that only, like. Point is, I don't need to be there in his place to do that. I can always make someone a presenter. See, go here, make that person a presenter and I can see what he's doing. The way he's seeing mine, I can see he's on debug. That is how the debug support happens always in the institute. Okay. I hope you understood this. Uh, one more thing I want to tell this. Our online training started in 2013. Not in 2020. Not It didn't start with COVID actually. Even before this, we had online training. It was mostly targeted for Everyone outside Bangalore, many students from US such. Why we did this? Because if you have to learn system wedlock in US from someone like me, let's say, someone who has that level of expertise, it costs like three lakhs per six days. I'm telling correct figures and just check Google, they will get it. They'll conduct six days of continuous stretch of training. And in six days, you can't learn language. It has to be distributed. Six days, it becomes too hectic and you won't learn anything. Same thing we used to do for what? 12,000 for three months or maybe two months. So which is naturally easy for them. That's how they used to come. That's how we started online learning. Uh, yeah. So what, what does it mean? Why 2013 number is significant? We have been in online training for last 9 to 10 years. So we know what difficulty student faces, how to support. That is where we started coming up with this concept of recorded video access. Whether you attend or you miss, you will get access to the video. Okay. The only here trust is what? The student should utilize the things properly. He should not give it access to 10 people and uh, do that. Right? The trust need to be maintained. Otherwise, our online training won't be there, won't be any issue because we are in we are into this model. So we know what issues happen, uh, how to make sure that the learning is proper. So that's where I never got up from my chair, right? I do everything in my laptop only. That is making sure that online students don't feel any difference at all. You, are, you also don't feel any difference because whatever I have to explain, it got projected to here and you see, get the same. That's how our process is quite stable. You Even if it is online, even if somebody is attending from NOIDA or anywhere, they won't face any difference at all. And the more importantly, the interaction is every day, regular interaction. It's not like today is one session after one week. Tomorrow there is a session again. 
that means anything you have a doubt you have someone to clarify tomorrow also i hope it answers but what we can do is someone is let's say from hyderabad and he needs that personal interaction we do have trainers in hyderabad we do have people in noida we can connect with them for few days and they can offline clarify it us there itself in hyderabad itself or in noida it's possible Please read this. Okay. I completed my B Tech in Electronics and Communication. I am not. I didn't do M Tech. I am interested in BLSAP. May I learn? Be able to learn programming language, very log and system development. I hope you have read this. Yes, you can learn. I told you only one thing is, we will make your learning easier. I am not going to make the things complex. I am here to. I means our me and our trainers are here to make the learning easy for you. We will start off when we start off with very long. We will start off from the fundamental: how to write a AND gate, how to write a multiplexer, how to write a full adder, half adder. At that level, we will increase the gradual complexity. That way, you will not feel that complexity from day one. But what you will realize is, by the time we reach the last part of the training. You have got got into the complex things section. So what I mean by complex things, I would have started into I would start with basic things, but once I go into the projects, see this is the what I'm showing now is second part of Verilog. I told you Verilog is two things, right? Language and projects. So the projects, the complexity will start with projects. We get into the Advanced aspects, but by then what has happened? You already learned the very log basics, right? Very log language, everything you learn. So here, even though it's a difficult part, you don't find any difficulty. Uh, and we will make sure that we teach in such a way that your learning will be easy for you. Lot of things are covered in this memory. Uh, once memory is done. Uh, See, one memory topic itself I'm covering for 60 slides actually. Just one memory topic. Just to make sure that we cover everything in depth. Memory wrapper. Then five state machines, how to work with state machines. All those kind of things will be there. See, this has got a lot of other projects also. I'm just not showing everything for lack of time. Uh, so the answer is what? Yes, you can learn. Even if you are from a different domain, there's no problem. You can learn. It's just that you need to believe in your abilities. You should have confidence in yourself that I can learn. Now, the next question. What if I am not able to learn? I find difficulty with programming. Up to one month, option to switch. You can switch to DFT domain. You can switch to physical design domain. Any domain. No additional cost. Whatever fee you paid, it will be just adjusted for the different. Same thing can be done vice versa. So you joined physical design, you didn't like it, you can switch to verification. When is DFT demo session? It will be mostly Sunday. We'll let you know the timing. Right now, I don't have the clarity about timing. We'll inform you. So we have the list of people who have applied for DFT demo session. We'll send a mail to them. So in case you haven't filled that form, please fill that form. We have sent one form to fill, right? For demo session, you please select DFT in, that, in case you want to attend the DFT. To the, all those email IDs, we'll be sending the demo session details. Uh, 
finished EC 15 years ago. Campus placement led me to work in software domain. Since then, post completion of training, VLS I consider profile like this. If yes, what courses are the best to enroll? In this case, first thing we have to ask is which company is working in? Let's say the person is working into Infosys, TCS, Wipro, Artec Mahindra, or Capgen. Where there is a VLSI division is there. All these companies which I spoke about, they all have a VLSI division. When the company has VLSI division, even though you worked into software domain, you can always project some part of your experience as a VLSI experience. With that experience, you can get in. Let's say you are into Wells Fargo, which has no VLS division. It's only completely software division or JP Morgan. It's a completely banking or some software company, right? In those cases, it's very it's difficult. But if you have if you are into a company where you have that company has any VLSI or embedded division, it's possible. It's possible. There are many people who have done that also. Uh, I hope it answers the question. If you still have a question, you can post further questions. Next. Is there any major difference between design verification and functional verification? Which is best? Tell me what is the answer. What is the answer? Both are same, right? I said both are same. The answer is what? Both are same. I am working in design verification, domain as a fashion, which course I should offer? I would say VLSI, front end training for freshers is good. See, the problem working as a fresher is you always have a doubt with many things. Do I know digital design in depth? You, your answer may be I know 50%. The problem is what is the remaining 50% I know? Very long. You may say I know 30%. I know some, I don't know 70%. I don't know what is that 70%. Rather, my suggestion is spend another one month or another two months more. You learn everything. There is no doubt itself, right? There is no doubt. Now, you may be additionally spending another five to 10,000. Spending another 10,000 for career purpose, no problem. Because I'll tell you one thing, you'll enjoy the learning. If you do it in a right way, the six months you'll enjoy. Actually, you will see a significant difference in yourself. The day you join, the day you leave the institute, if you have put the right effort, you will see that I have done something in my career action. So that difference will definitely come. So that's where I would suggest you can go for front-end training for freshers. But if you say, no, I'm good with Verilog, I'm confident, then you can go for experience course, where you directly start with the system Verilog training. So I hope it answers most of your questions. Even if I work, same question, continuation to that Cap Gemini question. Even if I work as analyst for two years, will the institute provide me two years experience? You don't need any experience certificate from the institute. Uh, you just have to say that you did DFT role in Cap Gemini. Whatever company, I don't want to name the company. DFT role, who? Who will go to the gap journey and check have you done DFT or have you done software? How does the company hire? They hire based on your potential, based on your knowledge. Let's say I want to hire someone today. I won't see which company is from actually. I'll see whether he will do my job or not. How, how serious he is about job, whether he will work, do the required hard work, required effort and does he come with the motivation. If you do that, no one will really care. Just that you don't show yourself as unleashed. In your resume, you'll say that you worked into DFT profile. I hope it answers and there is no nothing wrong nothing no problem in that companies hire and many people do that i'll tell you same cap gemini example i'll tell you right now cap gemini has at least vlsa division when when it came 2019 onwards it's there because around 2018 or 19 they got acquired they acquired it in 2016 some three people from cap gemini joined You know what one of one of those persons is doing now? He's a lead engineering guru. Maybe, maybe he might be getting 45 lakhs. I think so, roughly by seeing the experience numbers and other things, 
maybe 35 to 40 lakhs he might might be getting now i don't know what his salary was at cap gemini i don't want to name the name. other two people have also settled that was a time where cap gemini didn't had any real asset division it was a few software company cap gemini acquired ultra in 2019 that is where it became real asset company so when they didn't even had any software real asset division the people were able to get settled into the companies now for you when company itself has real asset division there is nothing uh, no uh, no problem in uh, switching to a better I hope it answers your question. Sir, your voice is not audible. Online participants, can you hear me? Okay. 
next question if design verification and functional verification are same then it's the same for same course for both right yes it's the same course i told you what is the first thing i said when we started off with presentation whatever you call all four of them are same rtl design and verification front end training for freshers functional verification training for freshers asic verification everything is same any other questions kapil do you have any questions now uh, so uh, is classroom students any questions so if you are done then the course start day mostly monday or tuesday now why one or two days gap is because we have to complete the enrollments in some some of you might be interested to enroll monday or tuesday uh, it will start and the it will be continuous there won't be any breaks sometimes we give breaks three four days break because at that time students ask once we are done with very long they want two three days break because they want to revise everything that's it i probably forgot to show one thing regarding the placements i wanted to just show you see what we do is for placement support we create a job support we, we create job support uh let's say yesterday one company posted the requirement is simple you can see here trana technologies uh like this in this kind of group we keep posting the requirements all the students who require job support will be there in this group. we get this kind of requirements from the companies i am just showing you how placements work because that is one very important aspect of them right? they will tell which year of pass out what is the present wage requirement they will tell salary details it can be anywhere from 3.5 to 6.5 lakhs and then we post that requirement into the groups and we give a link where the candidates have to apply some link where the candidates have to apply let's say if i show you how many people might have applied that should give you a measure of how many people are there currently looking for a job in the institute i am showing you what is there in the live page right how many do you think are there seven people so we had uh, again what is the significance of this showing is we had good placements because someone requires a job how it has been helping us is we are able to make sure that even if you get 20 people only or 30 people only uh, we are able to make sure that people are Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, you... Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, this is about uh, brief about it. I mean, again, how many might have applied? Let me see. I don't track this day to day, but just I want to see. 
yeah, around 20 plus people applied at that time. Right? So probably this uh, again it was for different domains. All the domains put together, it was not just for verification. Uh, some 11 percent into functional verification, some people into physical design, some into DFT. So it was all mix of people put together. 27 people. So I, I mean, I, we, you might be hearing 90 percent placement, 90 percent placements. That's how we are arriving at number 90 percent because we may have trained almost 400 to 600 people in a year. At this point of time. We have only 27 people who are actively looking for the job. That's the measure how we came up with that number. Any questions? So yeah, in case you would like to enroll for the course. This is the account where you can make the free transfer and you have to fill one form. The problem with other places where I know that training is the training happens in bulk, maybe 1000 or 1100 people in a year. Even if you consider 50 percent placement, still 500 people are left without job. Here, I think you won't see that kind of major problem. It's lesser numbers, but placement percentage will be more. Any questions? Okay. So, if you don't have any other questions, we'll wind up this end the session here. Okay. So, so online students, any question? question? Yeah. So can I ask one question? So now I just yes. wanted to ask that your training, physical training, will happen where exactly? Which is your center? Bangalore. It will happen in Bangalore. Okay, okay. Uh, and as per the, the as you have said, the timings will be from 9 30 to 1 30 or 2 to 6. Am I correct? Yes, okay, okay. And when is, are the trainings going to start from, sir? It is starting, you can say Tuesday. Let it be clear, it will start on Tuesday. Okay, no, the reason why I asked because I stay in Bombay basically and to come to Bengaluru and again having the other logistic problems and understanding that this is a vacation time. So understanding the traveling problem also. So how can I go about that was a big question for me in this regard. What you can do in this case is for one month you can do online course. Okay. In the time you come to Bangalore. Once you are in Bangalore, you can attend the live training, offline training. Institute okay. has a complete flexibility where today you attend online. Tomorrow you okay. come offline because okay. schedule is not different. Schedule is same. The whatever happens to the classroom students, same thing happens to the online. So you have a complete flexibility. One week online, one week offline. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm not even going to ask you your attendance. I'm going to only ask you assignment submissions. There are some criteria okay. for me. Attendance doesn't matter actually because you may not be attending. You may still be learning. That's fine. But if you do assignments properly, that's fine. Now coming back to your question. You can attend online till the time you are in Bangalore and rest you can attend offline. And if you have decided to join, better to join early on. Because why wait for another one and a half month? That one and a half month okay. may be very valuable for you. Actually speaking, you may find once you complete the training, you will really see the value of that one and a half month. Because that one and a half month is something where you can do a very complex project. I'm yes, correct, about sir, controller. Yeah, those kind of things. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So we will end the session here.